Hey, what's up? It's Snell. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. And today's video is brought to you by my good friend Angela. And a nice trade we did. Thank you, Ange. Because. Oh, yeah. We're going over the new Blood Incantation Maxi single, Luminescent Bridge, on Century Media Records. Clear vinyl. We have Obliquity of the Ecliptic and the title track, Luminescent Bridge. Hails to the eternal champion himself, Arthur Riz, for, as always, just destroying the mix and mastering job on here. So good. Recorded at Rocky Mountain. Recorders by Chris uh, McNaughton. I hope I said that correctly. Special thanks to Alex Pace and James Grau. Paintings by Steve R. Dodd. And the layout is by Telepath Design. I really love the cosmetics. I have not switched out the shrink wrap cover yet. Because thankfully... It opened from the top. So the title track on side two, Luminescent Bridge, nine minutes and 39 seconds, and Obliquity is eight minutes and 53 seconds. And this is one of my favorite Blood Incantation songs they've ever written. This song, honestly, could fit on Interdimensional Extinction, and it would only add to its awesomeness. But, if you're lucky enough to see them on the upcoming Cannibal Corpse Gore Guts Tour, there is a tour edition of this. On a different color vinyl variant. I don't know if the band wants me to give that color away. So I'm not. But um, this is one of the first releases in a while. That actually does not have any pictures. From the Stargate Research Facility. There's no band promo photos. No lyrics. Just 12 inches of cosmic death metal. On the A side of things, and on side two, a nice ambient, just chill, awesome. I okay. Now I'm a sucker for this type of stuff. I don't know why I just got a commercial in the middle of a music video, but um, I should have probably just thrown the record on. I really should have, but I apologize. I honestly just wanted to look down and be able to look at the music video because it's so badass for Obliquity of the Ecliptic. And I really, really, this is the one thing that I'm kind of like, oh man. There's just no lyrics for the song, and there's like no new promo photos or anything. Unless there's like, maybe the tour edition has some, I, I don't really know. But I'm going to ask for the lyrics, because I've deciphered some of them, but... Side 2 is instrumental and is so good. But, I, I, like I was saying, this is one of my favorite Blood Incantation songs. 
It's so good. Like, if you like Blood Incantation, you like this song. It even has, like, that time ghoul type part where... Oh, it's, it's so good. And all the music was written by Isaac on... Obliquity. And the lyrics by Paul. And Luminescent Bridge, the music was written by both Jeff and Morris. Recorded at Rocky Mountain. Recorders by Chris McNaughton. Sorry if I mispronounce anybody's name, but mixed and mastered at Redwood Studios by the eternal champion himself, Arthur Risk. And just... Paintings by Steve R. Dodd, or Dodd. I really need to get this long sleeve. And I need to get rid of... I cannot stand. <laughs> you folks know how I feel about shrink wrap. Because I'm all out of vinyl sleeves, so... Even my copy of Dawn of Possession right now, it just has to sit very nicely next to me. Because it also gets played a lot, so. But, this was the first release in a while that it's just straight Century Media. Although, it is licensed by the Stargate Research Society. There's just no photos or anything. Like... Hold on one second. For some reason, my Time Wave Zero... ...sticker is on my... ...Live Vitrification LP, and that's not good. How the hell did that happen? Hold on. And this is why I legitimately, I hate, hate, like, hate, straight up, like, strength wrap covers. But now, I'm going to turn the title track on, and hopefully there's not a commercial. And there was, so thankfully I was prepared. But we gotta fix something real quick. Because it's gonna bug the shit out of me. Please, Century Media, use real vinyl sleeves. Come on. Like, thankfully I noticed that I might have to put some, like, there we go. Yeah. And the B side of things. Now, if you didn't like Time Wave Zero, you're probably not going to really dig Luminescent Bridge. But here's what I'm talking about. I noticed that it was missing the actual like Stargate research logo and that's fine and everything and also one of the first releases to not have Don Dixon artwork and again I'm cool with that not this that's total Don Dixon I mean it's right there I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I should have grabbed all my shit. You know what? Hold on. I'm just going to grab the uh, picture disc real fast. Just so I can get to the bottom of something. Because it's just going to bother me. And in case you do not know, this was limited to a thousand. This is honestly like my vinyl go-to copy because I just 
don't really like playing my first press. I know that sounds corny, but like I just kind of don't. I normally listen to it on cassette more than anything. But um, paintings by Don Dixon. I I I knew I knew it. But again, just let me real quick check everything. But uh, I'm so sick. I, I just love Blood Incantation. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, you're just a fanboy. Oh, good. Then I'm a fanboy of one of the best bands in the game right now. Oh, they don't even listen to metal. I, I, do, you, do you know those guys? Because I'm guessing you don't, so you have no idea what you're talking about. So, for anybody that's like, oh, I liked them when they were into death metal. You have no idea what you're talking about. I'll give you folks a little, a little hint about just light and blood incantation. Don't believe anything you read or hear about blood incantation on the internet. Okay? Just a heads up. And I just forget. I just want to make sure if uh, Dixon did the cover here also. Bruce Pennington. And Pennington did this bad boy also. So sick. All right, I knew I got, I got the names confused. Don Dixon and Bruce Pennington, both really amazing artists from the time period and stuff. I love this painting. Hidden history. And again, Bruce Pennington. And Don Dixon, I just like I said, just gnarly, gnarly stuff. And I don't, again, I understand not everybody's into the whole ambient thing, but like, wow. As soon as I heard this track, I legit like wished it was longer. I, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to hear, you know, what else is in the bag. Like, seriously, I can't wait for the next record. It's gonna be just ridiculous. But, also, Spectral Voice. I'm really hoping we get a new Spectral Voice record this year. Don't really know, but like, I'm just hoping. But yeah, Don Dixon, Bruce Pennington, awesome sci fi influenced artwork. And then on Luminescent Bridge, we now have Steve. R. Dodd to the equation. Sorry, I'm just having some problems as always with bullshit. With that fix. No, I did not. <laughs> now I fixed it. There we go. And real quick, just such a classic image. Look at those demons. They didn't know back what they were. I, I think they did know what they were in for. Being like one of the biggest bands in modern death metal. And I'm beyond just stoked to be a fan. 
again, I just, I just love everything about Blood Incantation. Original artwork by Bruce Pennington, 1973. And this was mixed and mastered by Damian Herring at uh, Subterranean Watchtower Studios. I always forget that. And that the bass was recorded by Damon Good at the Cave Studios in Australia. I, that's one of those things I just always forget about. Logo by the Lurking Devourer. Sometimes it's good to always go back and read some cosmic echoes of the underground. And you see, recorded in Boulder, Colorado, July 2013. It's just gnarly when you go back now and look at it like, holy shit, this is like 10 years old? Wait. Oh my. Holy shit. And like the fifth tablet is hovering lifeless subter- Oh my goodness. Interdimensional extinction only just gets better and better. And same with Lum like Luminescent Bridge. Again, the more I've been listening to this, like, kind of in a row, like, I'll start with the, the demo. And then, split 7-inch. Interdimensional Extinction. Star Spawn. Live Vitrification. Hidden History of the Human Race, Time Wave Zero, and now, Luminescent Bridge. Now, I remember when it was, like, getting known as getting your tangerine dream on when going outside of the usual metal box and doing something along these lines of ambience, quiet, and just making shit sound like it's from the 1970s. And at the same time, making one of your sickest death metal songs to date. Like, it was just one of those things where I, I just, I remember being like, wait a minute. Like, because, like, somebody, I, I actually got blown up about this. Like, on Facebook, of all things. And I'm talking, like, at least nine people. New blood incantation. And then, like, they're sending me, like, did you pre-order it yet? I'm like, dude, they didn't even announce it yet. And then I had a conversation with somebody, and they were like, yo, don't even say, you're good. Don't worry. Like, and for real, I, I wasn't worrying. I just was, like, getting kind of frustrated with, like, people that don't understand, like, yo, I don't have a real job-type job. I can't just be like, yeah, I want this now. Like, I had to figure out a trade and stuff, and, you know, the patron helps so much, but that's a once-a-month thing. And the prize package, don't forget, this is no joke this month. I... Not playing games. And neither is Blood Incantation on Luminescent Bridge. Like, kind of picking up where Hidden History left off on the death metal side of things, but not really. Because like I said, this 
really reminds me of something that could be on interdimensional extinction. Or Star Spawn. Even Hidden History of the Human Race. But it gave me more of a interdimensional extinction vibe. I don't know if that's what they were going for. But I really, I'm like in love with the artwork. But again, I just need to get an actual vinyl sleeve. And like... Again, I know some people are going to be like, dude, mine's all bent. Hey, it depends where you order it from. But just a heads up, like, it's, it's just this. Because I think this still came to, like, $30. And again, I know that's a lot of money. It really is for just, like, two tracks. But the way I look at it, it as a fan, I want to support the boys, especially before the tour. And a tour that's not coming to Philly, which sucks. Because I haven't seen Cannibal Corpse in years. And I would love to see Cannibal again. And these things happen. But highly recommended. I mean, I, I know the songs are on YouTube, but on the turntable, it's amazing. Like, Blood Incantation have only been getting better with age, and Luminescent Bridge is just such a great example of that. But it doesn't even look fucking death metal. Well, no, it doesn't. But obliquity of the ecliptic. This is one of the best death metal songs of 2023. And I'm not just saying that. If I thought this was even mediocre, I would say it's a, it's okay. It's Blood Incantation. It's still better than, you know, the Duke Tomb Mold. But, like, these two songs speak to me way more than a bunch of just, like, I don't even know what Tomb Mold's doing, and I don't really care. I, I'll, I'll stick to Blood Incantation when it comes to just, like, being technical. And interesting. Because to me, that's what's so special about Blood Incantation. It's interesting. They scratch that itch that sometimes... I don't want to call out any bands, but some bands just... They don't scratch the itch. And these two tracks, for me... I mean, yeah, I want more, obviously, because I'm a big fan, but kind of enough right now to where I'm like, whoa, this rules, and it's only going to get better. So, if you're new to the game, Go check out the new Blood Incantation death metal song first. For real. Don't, unless. Unless you're like a fan of ambient music. Otherwise, maybe, you know, start your way backwards. Start with Luminescent Bridge and then go. To black, oh, oh my goodness. I knew I was going to stutter something up. But like. It's up to you. Really. How you listen to this bad boy. Because I listened to it. Ambient. Into the death metal track. And I was like. Whoa. Like, that was cool. And then. I actually like. 
synced up the music video with, with the LP because I'm a nerd like that and just watched it that way. Just nerd. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm a nerd like that. But uh, I'm just happy that we have some new Blood Incantation material for 2023. And again, I know it's only two songs. I know it's kind of expensive. But if you get to see the boys on the road with Cannibal Corpse, grab a tour copy. And just thank me later. Trust me. These songs rule. And I I know Luminescent Bridge is 9 minutes and 39 seconds. This could have easily been like a 45 minute song. If they really wanted it to be. So like knowing that. It makes it even more like impressive. Because it's like alright. What's on the back burner? Because a lot of the times, a maxi single is like, I know when the gang, uh, pardon for a second, I just have to remember the name of it. It's, uh, that's live. Hold on. I think I'm pretty sure I found. Yep. All right. Right here. This was technically a maxi single, but it was four songs. And, well, technically three, and then a live track of Inherent Off Duden, which is oh, like one of my favorite Wendigong songs. But, um, just extremely, extremely sick stuff. Like, just, I do not have the 12 inch of this. This is one of the few Undergang releases I don't have. And, like, uh, Grip of Insanity is a cover. So, technically, yeah, it's two tracks, a cover, and a live track. I forgot. So, yeah, it is a maxi single. I was going to say, wait, I swore this had four tracks, and it does. So. You can call it an EP, but technically, they earned that maxi single sticker. And thank you for putting the actual RPM on the on the record. That again, like shit like that, as stupid as it is. I don't think you folks know. <laughs> I'm sure some of you know. You ever get a record and you legit don't know what speed it's supposed to be played on? And like you end up listening to it a certain way. And then somebody comes over and they're like, yo, what are you listening to? And then you tell them and they're like, yo, you have it on the wrong speed. And then you put it on the right speed and it's like, Oh. Fuck. Like, I feel like an idiot. I forget what band it was. I Oh my... I, I legit thought it was the heaviest thing I had ever heard in my life. And then I figured, oh, wait a minute. You're playing it at the wrong speed. And then it was, like, just regular. And I was like, oh, like it's, it's not as, like, ridiculous. As, as it, I wish I could remember, because I accidentally put like uh, a thirty, uh, a forty-five at thirty-three, and it was like funeral doom, and it was, it was just like doom, like it, it was so much slower and heavier. Than like just the regular mix that I actually was like, dude, this is like the heaviest thing I've ever heard. And then I realized my mistake when my friend was like, yo, like, that's not how the CD sounds. And I was like, wait, what? And then like, yeah, I realized like I, I, I fucked up. I was like, 
Ooh, like, yeah, I screwed up. But, hails to Blood Incantation, and thank you to Angela for making today's video possible. Thank you to Paul for um, letting me know to just uh, not worry about this, and that, you know, he was absolutely right. He's like, dude, we didn't even announce it yet. Copies are going to be available. Don't stress. Although I didn't mention like anything about the Cold as Light reissues because they don't. He does, that's its own thing. Because, I mean, shit. Like, I really hope that October 2nd thing is not real. Like I I and I that sounds so stupid, but um supposedly everything like the reissues stop being sold October second. I do not get paid by the Patreon until the fifth. So if that happens, no. So let's hope that does not happen. So. Hopefully we can pre-order those Cold as Life records, but in the meantime, I'll be traveling the cosmos with Blood Incantation on Luminescent Bridge. Two tracks, one of cosmic heavy death metal with a nice little ambient technical section, and a straight up ambient chill track with percussion and it's so good because again I'm a sucker for Tangerine Dream I can go on and on but we're not y you get it but Blood Incantation, if you're looking for the straight-up death metal, Interdimensional Extinction and Star Spawn have you covered. If you want a little bit more technicality, Hidden History, if you want to just space out, eat some fungi, and just, you know, <laughs> go to space in your mind. Time Wave Zero, and then Luminescent Bridge is a great, like, come down. Because you can throw on the first track, get a little dose of death metal, and be like, alright, like, I'm feeling good. And then, you know, you dive in the Luminescent Bridge, and it's just like, you can get your float on, and... Work your way back down from time wave zero. See? Because you, you start, well, depending on your collection, but start with interdimensional extinction and just work your way to luminescent bridge. Or start at luminescent bridge and work your way to interdimensional extinction. I think it's an interesting journey either way, and you're going to get a hefty dose of killer cosmic death metal and ambience. And for those of you that didn't see this coming, I'm sorry, but like you must not have been paying attention. And I know a lot of people, dude, did you see their in their bag video from Aniba? Yeah. I'm sitting there with a pen and paper writing down every single record that, like, Paul grabbed, Morris grabbed, Jeff grabbed. Isaac was, like, the only one that kind of grabbed some, like, normal, like, death metal. Everybody else was you know, getting, like, some gnarly shit, like, especially Paul getting the new Rest in Power to, uh, Klaus Schultz, but 
getting the new Paul Schultz record, it was just like I, I just remember being like, Wow, dude, that's so sick. And like just the Karma Moffat records, because again, if it wasn't for uh Paul letting me know about like morning trip through that what's in my bag video, I wouldn't have two of my favorite records to just chill out to. So thank you for having an open mind musically. Because like even like, you know, again, I'm a big, I'm a mark for this type of stuff. So I know some of you are like, well, of course you're going to fucking like it. Well, that's not true. If I didn't like it, I legit would 120% just like the Donner Party, I would tell you, like, ah, it's kind of boof. You don't need this in your life. Where, if you're a Blood Incantation fan, uh, yeah, Luminescent Bridge. Again, like I said, uh, Obliquity is like one of my favorite Blood Incantation songs. Like ever since that music video dropped, I've watched it at least four times a day. And having it physically, holy shit. But I'm going to shut up. I did not mean for this to go on this long. Listen to Blood Incantation, Luminescent Bridge, and... Let me know in the comments below if you like the death metal track more than the ambient track. Because I'm sure most of you probably are going to like the death metal track a little bit more. They're both really good, but there's something about that death metal track that I just, as soon as I heard it, I was like, wow. And I hope you feel the same way. So thank you again to Angela. Thank you to the Patreon. Thank you to the people that let me know about this release a little bit in advance. Even before the band announced it. But at the same time, you gotta chill with that when it comes to that type of stuff. Like, somebody dropped the ball early again at Century Media. It happens, but, like, I don't think this was supposed to be announced a few days later. Because, like, pre order started September 13th, and it wasn't even announced until, like, the 15th, if I remember. Like, so, it was kind of a weird release, but very happy, and boom. I didn't really think I'd, well, I was talking to Pat about a new blood incantation and what it might be, and we were kind of thinking, and I honestly, I was like, I, I'm i thinking another Spectral Voice split, like the way that Anatomia and Undagong did too. I was kind of thinking, I was like, it'd be kind of cool, but I want that new Spectral Voice album. You see where I'm, like, you get, you, you know what I mean? So, I kind of, I, I get it 100%. But, also, getting the chance to do a maxi single, like, as a, that, again, that's something I want under my belt. I want a Cursed Wound, out of BC Lives, or Frog Mist, but mostly, I want a Cursed Wound to get a maxi single on something especially on the new record coming out i would love to give you folks a little taste of what we have for the full length so thanks for watching as always you fucking rule listen to blood incantation maybe you'll live forever hails blood.